If you haven't done so, please pause the video and try this question on your own first before listening on. We'll go ahead and first draw a picture that represents the information described in the problem. So here is this negatively charged electron and it's traveling between two plates and then it enters a magnetic field and leaves the region of where the plates were and as it enters into that magnetic field it begins to move in a circular trajectory. And we'll notice that when the electron is moving between the plates it's moving in a straight line as indicated by the question. Now let's look at some of the forces that are acting on the electron while it's traveling between the plates. Now we'll notice again that the charges on the plates are positive here and negative here which means that an electric field is being produced and anytime a charged particle moves through an electric field it's going to experience an electric force. It's probably intuitive actually that this negative charge would be attracted towards the positive plate. So in fact we're going to put an upward force showing that force of attraction and we can label it the electric force or Fe. But we'll also notice that there are these green X's present between the two plates and those X's represent a magnetic field that is pointing into the page. And because of the presence of that magnetic field there must be a magnetic force acting on this negative electron. And we would correctly predict that the magnetic force has to be pointing down and the reason it has to be pointing down is because the electron is moving in a straight line. So any force that's pushing the electron upward, like this electric force, must be balanced by a force that's pushing it downward, like the magnetic force. That way the electron will move in a straight line. So we can actually set these two forces equal to one another. And we will recall that the electric force is equal to the product of the electric field and the charge. And the magnetic force is equal to the product of the charge, the speed, and the magnetic field. Now notice that the charge Q appears on both sides of this equation. So if we divide both sides by Q, it will essentially cancel away. And so we're left with the electric field equaling the speed times the magnetic field. This is a result that we're going to want to hold on to and refer back to shortly. Now let's consider the electron as it moves into the magnetic field and no longer experiences the electric force that is produced by those charged plates. So in other words, when the electron enters into the magnetic field, this force is going to disappear. And so now the free body diagram can be simplified. And so the magnetic force is the only force acting on the electron as it moves into this region and travels in a circle. Because it's traveling in a circle, we know that the net force has to equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration. Now we're using centripetal acceleration because it's moving in a circle. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the speed squared divided by the radius of its circular path. Now remember that the net force acting on the electron in this region is the magnetic force. So we're going to fill in Fb in for the net force. We once again recall that Fb is equal to the charge times the speed times the magnetic field strength. So we can substitute that in there. Notice that a factor of V appears on both sides. So if we divide both sides by V, this V will cancel and the V squared will just become V. Now the question asks us to determine the value of the charge divided by the mass. They're using the letter E to represent the charge and that's because this is an electron. So perhaps we can go ahead and do the same. Let's replace the symbol Q which is the traditional symbol for charge, with the charge of an electron, which we can denote as being E. So we're trying to solve this equation for E divided by M. So let's divide both sides of this equation by M. And on the right-hand side, the M's will cancel. And then to isolate the ratio of E to M, we can divide both sides of the equation by B. And when we do that, the b's will cancel out on the left-hand side. So we have e divided by m is equal to 
the speed divided by the product of the radius and the magnetic field. So the radius is given to us in the problem. Notice that we'll have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 3 in order to get it into meters. The magnetic field is given to us in a standard unit of Tesla. We don't actually have the speed, but that's all right because we have this equation over here. And so let's return to this equation. And what we can do is actually solve that equation for the speed by dividing both sides by the magnetic field. And so we can see that the speed is equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field. Let's substitute that expression in for the speed over here. And so we have done that, and this can be algebraically simplified. A little bit of a shortcut here, this b is actually going to be pushed down to the denominator. But to really see that, notice that we have e over b divided by rb. You can place a 1 underneath the rb, and then you're going to do a keep, keep change flip sort of procedure. So what that means is you keep the first fraction the same, you change the division to multiplication, and then you flip the second fraction to become 1 over rb. So when we multiply, we're going to be left with the electric field in the numerator, and then b times rb will be equal to rb squared. And so now, finally, we are ready to plug in the known values. The electric field was given to us in a standard unit. So we can plug in the electric field, the radius, and the magnetic field. So go ahead and plug that into your calculator. Don't forget to square the magnetic field. And you should get roughly 6.2 times 10 to the power of 4. And since we calculated charge divided by mass, we would need to use the unit of charge divided by mass. Charge is measured in coulombs. Mass is measured in kilograms, so this becomes the correct answer.